to Skein Studio. My name is Kristen. Uh, you can find me on Ravelry as K10, that's K10, and on Instagram as Skein Yarn. Uh, this is episode number 62. Uh, today is Thursday, the 30th of November, and yeah, hope you're all well. Um, it is definitely um, turned summer here it's very hot and humid uh, we actually went for a walk on the weekend to the beach and uh, we saw a brown snake a baby brown snake which was pretty terrifying <laughs> um, it, it was really weird too because the path that we were walking on it was quite hilly and the snake came out of the bushes and onto the pathway and it couldn't grip the pathway so it started to fall like slide down the path um, and there was a couple in front of us and then there was us and we turned around and ran the other way because we know how poisonous they are but the other couple were standing around it looking at it and I was like oh anyway I walked over and I heard them talking and they were from the UK and I just said oh you might just want to be careful because uh, that snakes quite venomous and he went, really? And I said, yeah, it's a baby brown snake, so you might want to give it a bit of room, otherwise it will attack. <laughs> um, anyway, so it eventually did uh, wander away, and we kept walking to the beach, uh, which is around, you sort of go over the headland and down into the beach. Anyway, that couple didn't. They turned back. <laughs> I think I scared them. But you've got to be very careful of baby brown snakes, because... At the time I thought, I hope I'm saying that right because I'm pretty sure they were venomous and then when I got back home I um, googled it and yes, the baby brown snakes have enough venom in them to kill 20 adults, so that's an adult human beings, so yeah that's um, pretty scary, so anyway just got to be very careful. But yes, we only saw the one snake, thank God, I hate snakes, um, they just terrify me, and I grew up uh, in rural uh, New South Wales, and we, our house backed onto a creek, um, and in summer, a creek or any sort of waterway is probably the worst place to be for snakes, because they do go down to the water. Um, so yes, I saw, I've seen a lot of snakes and yes, I'm always, no matter where we are, even if we're in a country that has no snakes, <laughs> I'm like super alert when we're anywhere near high grass or bushlands. So yeah, anyway, that was interesting. Um, but yeah, the weather has been really, really humid and hot and um, makes dying uh, a little bit difficult. <laughs> Uncomfortable, I suppose, is a better word. Uh, but yeah, anyway, we're almost uh, at the end of the year, which means we have a bit of a break coming up, which is great. Uh, next week I have my family coming up for a early Christmas. Um, Paul and I are actually heading to uh, his parents' place in Perth for Christmas, so we won't be here um, to spend it with my family, so we're getting together early. So I'll have my parents and my brother and his family up. Um, that's next week. I will still podcast. Um, they're not coming till Saturday, so I will get a podcast in on Friday. Um, so yeah, busy, busy. Um, let's get into the knitting. Uh, so works in progress. I am still working on my test knit. This is for Hockey uh, Locatelli. Um, it's a simple top down uh, jumper that I've shown the past few episodes and I have finished the body completely. I um, She changed the pattern sort of halfway through test knitting and by change the pattern I mean she added a couple of inches to the bottom um, just because she had been wearing the jumper and found that it was riding up. Um, and needed a little bit more length in the body so that was lucky because I was just about to do the ribbing when she um, told everybody to add a few more inches so I added I, I think she said add another two inches I think I added one and a half yeah and then I the rib at the bottom 
Um, she has you knitting the rib, I think it's like six rows of rib, but I found that um, when I went to cast off the uh, ribbing, because it was only a small amount, it actually started to curl back on itself, so I put the stitches back on the needle. I'd only done a couple of casts, a uh, couple of stitches, I've only, I only had cast off a couple of stitches, and I did um, another six rows, I think. Anyway, it, it worked out well because the body length is now exactly as she wanted it in the pattern except I've added a little bit extra to the rib and as you can see the rib at the bottom it's sitting nice and straight so that's good um, I'm using our single ply um, sock weight uptown sock and it's in the eventide colorway and I did alternate skeins <clears throat> excuse me and I think um, yeah I think it has blended quite nicely. Uh, so yes, I've done the body and then I have now um, picked up for the sleeves and yeah, it, now that I'm on the sleeves it shouldn't be that long uh, until this is finished. Uh, I am alternating skeins on the sleeve as well because one of the skeins is quite a bit lighter than the other and I didn't want one sleeve to look lighter than the other because um, normally if I have enough yarn, I don't like alternating um, skeins in sleeves because I just find it would be too fiddly, but I needed to uh, this time because I don't think I have enough yarn um, in one ball or one cake to complete both sleeves. Um, what else was I going to say? I think that was everything. Yeah. Oh, and then I've just got to uh, finish the neck off and, and it's done. So making progress with it. It's nice, it's a nice relaxing knit because you don't have to really think about what you're knitting, you just pick it up and start knitting, which is great for TV. Um, great TV um, project. Um, what else? Oh yes, so I cast on a new um, project I spoke about this the last couple of weeks. This is uh, Portage by Melissa, and I can't, I really don't know how to pronounce her last name. Sasha Swery, something like that. Sasha Swery. I've looked it up on Google and it, it won't tell me, so I'll put her name over here. Um, and this is it. It's just cast on. Uh, I'm using uh, our Voyage DK. This is in our new colorway um, Sleep In. I spoke about it last week. It's sort of a nice pinky mauve. And yeah, I only really just cast this on not last night, the night before. And I started knitting this while we were watching TV and I was actually feeling a bit tired. And the back of the cardigan um, has a kind of like a cable-y um, stitch pattern, which you can't really see there. But um, it takes a bit of concentration. I'm sure once I get the pattern in my head, I'll be able to knit on it without thinking about it. But it was just a bit too much for me, so I ended up putting it down and picking up the test knit, which is good because I really should probably knit on the test knit. Um, more because I need to get that finished but um, I also wanted to um, play around with these needles which I mentioned uh, was sent to me by Higher Higher um, I actually was contacted by Higher Higher Europe on um, Instagram and they asked me if I'd like to do a review of um, a set of their interchangeable needles um, and I was more than happy to do that because I've never used their needles before and um, they sent me a bamboo, um, I've already said all this before, um, and I'm really enjoying them. Um, I think, uh, well, I'm enjoying them so far, I mean I haven't knit a lot with them, but um, one thing that I have noticed that I really, really like is the cable is um, uh, very flexible and it's so much more comfortable to knit with 
than the Knit Pro which can be a bit stiff and kind of so when you're knitting they sort of stick out like this and it, it I don't know it feels really odd <laughs> but this is really nice it, it you know you can kind of move it around and the cable will move around it's that was one of the big things I, I um, found when I started uh, using these needles it was like oh that's really good Anyway, I will talk more about it as I progress with the project. Yeah. Oh, I also wanted to mention my bag that I'm using for this project. So I uh, was looking in my stash of project bags and I wanted something nice and Christmassy. And this stuck out. Um, if you've been watching the podcast for quite some time, you'll remember this was sent to me by Made by Ganesh, who has a Etsy store. Uh, she's an Australian um, bag uh, project bag maker, and uh, she sent me this, and I just love it. It's the Snuggle Pot and Cuddle Pie fabric, and um, yeah, it's just that green and red and very kind of Australian Christmassy, summery type fabric. It's really really sweet. So yeah, a finished object. I am wearing it and I'm going to have to take it off soon because it's really, really hot. Well, I'll take it off now. Um, I finished the surprise party shawl. This is the one that was uh, designed by Curious Handmaid, aka Helen Stewart. And I had such a great time knitting this. Um, I It just flew off the needles. It was a lot of fun. I really, really enjoyed it. I used it mainly as A, I wanted a kit for our new colourways that are coming out soon and B, I um, wanted to test the colourways uh, in a project and I've seen so many of these on um, Instagram and I loved all of them so I just, I knew this was going to be a perfect project so, and it was, it was fantastic. The only thing that I did differently was I added a um, contrast pico border uh, in the yellow and I was a little bit worried at first that it might look a bit odd um, maybe a little bit too bright but I actually put a call out on Instagram and got lots of people saying that they thought that it would look um, really good so I kind of felt like they um, <laughs> Yeah, they were giving me permission to, <laughs> to do it. I mean, honestly, I, I thought if it was going to look a bit silly, I could easily uh, need a few uh, rows. Not a few rows, but do a little bit of the Pico bind off uh, for, say, a couple of uh, inches, and then if I didn't like it, I could easily rip it out. But I, I knew as soon as I started doing it that it was really, really nice. It, was, it suited the project. Um... I had, I wasn't even taking any notice as to how much yarn I had left over for the Pico bind off and I used mini skeins, they're 20 gram mini skeins and when I got to the end of the bind off uh, and I tore the yarn off I looked in my bag and there was a tiny little bit left so I just squeezed it in. Um, yes, yeah, so if you're going to do that be careful. Just make sure you do have enough uh, for the bind off because Pico bind off um, edges do take a lot more yarn than normal. But yeah, I mean, that was the only uh, thing that I did differently. And uh, I really just, I soaked this and I spun it in the, in the washing machine, just spun, uh, put it on a spin dry cycle. And then I just laid it out on the bed that's in here, the guest bed, and I didn't even pin it, I just um, pulled it all out and sort of got it in shape and left it to dry overnight and um, that was all the blocking it needed because, I mean, it's it's got a tiny bit of lace in the colours section and then the eyelets at the top, but yeah, it, it didn't really need much to uh, block it out nicely. Uh, again, for the last time, um, I used our speckle dye colour uh, Whisper 
I used our new colorway Sunshine, um, Pretty in Pink, Wisp, Blueberry, Porticoyo, and yeah. Uh, we have kits going up tomorrow on the shop. I've put together, I think it's five colorway kits for this particular shawl. Um, so if you're interested, maybe go and check that out. And we've also just released all of our new colorways for uh, winter and summer. So I, if you missed last week, I think I was explaining that we've decided to do two different color types, two different color palettes for um, each season. So we are going into summer now and people in the north are going into winter. So we've done colors for both seasons and then put them together and it, it I'm really happy with it so um, if you're interested go and have a look at our colorways page because they're all up. In the mail uh, I received some lovely yarn so last week I had the awful incident with the um, walk collection yarn that I tried to uh, frog my project and I got into a big mess and I ended up having to throw a lot of the yarn away. Um, I, I did get, I actually was lucky because I had um, frogged a whole skein of yarn and then, and I thought I only had the one skein, but then I was looking around and I thought I had it in here, but I must have put it away. I actually have two um, 100 gram skeins of that yarn left, so that's great. I can actually do something with it. Anyway, as a consolation, because I did go to the Walk Collection website, but she had the update the week before and there wasn't much left in the shop, so I thought, I mean, I want to treat myself to some yarn. And just at that moment, I got this email from Ren and Ollie, which is an Australian dye company, and um, they were having an update on Saturday, last Saturday, so I went and bought myself some yarn. So this is Ren and Ollie. Spin DK Oops. in the colorway Cinnabar. Ooh, look at that. It's so pretty. Um, so these are my colors without a doubt. It's the bright pinks and the gold, and it's sort of over dyed in this lovely rich brown. Um, I think it's stunning. I love it. There's even a little bit of purple in there. And I bought five skeins. And they're just stunning. Love it. Um, I did a little bit of pattern searching before I actually bought these just to have a look at what I wanted and to make sure I got enough skeins this time. I think that's the problem with me because I have my own yarn shop. I just tend to grab whatever and I think, well, if I need more, I'll just dye up more. So I'm not, I'm not really that thoughtful when it comes to um, selecting enough skeins. Anyway, I went online and I had a look for patterns and um, I found one called the Embrun's Cardigan um, by Emily, I think I'm saying that right, Emily Louis, um, and I'll put a picture up. Uh, I thought this would look really, really nice, so it's kind of a cropped cardigan. Um, there used to be a pattern that was very similar. It sort of um, sits higher at the, fr the front sit higher and then it goes uh, lower at the back but it sort of sits on your high hip. Um, it'll look really really nice with say a high-waisted skirt or a um, nice little dress. So yes that's what I have in mind for these skeins and I will be casting that on at some stage. <laughs> it's it's in uh, the future. In the near future I will be casting that on because I've got quite a few things on the needles at the moment so yeah. But anyway it's beautiful yarn and if you haven't checked out Ren and Ollie please go and check out her website. I will put a link in the show notes. Um, she has really interesting colorways. I love her color sense. And she's got a great Instagram site too, so go check that out. Uh, sewing, I have nothing to show you. I've done nothing. I, I've been pretty much uh, spring cleaning the place and 
yeah, I just have not had a chance. It's always this time of year where it gets a bit crazy. I am hoping this weekend, hopefully, because tomorrow is Friday and uh, we work today, but hopefully tomorrow we're having the day off. So I'm hoping to get the Christmas shopping done tomorrow. Um, I've got a little bit of cleaning left to do before my parents and my brother comes up. Um, there's a little bit of gardening I need to do and then yes, the rest of the time I can relax and do some sewing. So hopefully I'll get to show you something next week. I did actually buy quite a few patterns. Um, the, there was a Black Friday sale on Indie Stitches. The Indie Stitches website, which go check it out if you're interested in sewing and you live in Australia or if you live overseas, she ships internationally. But she has a whole heap of indie patterns, sewing patterns, um, and yeah, great, great range. Um, so she had, I think it was 20% off, so I bought, I think it was five patterns, maybe four, and they're on their way, so that's exciting. Um, but yeah, I think that's pretty much it for this week. Um, yeah, I've pretty much said all I needed to say. Um, I hope you're all well and I will be back next week. I, I'm going to make this a weekly thing. I find it much easier to keep track of what I'm doing and, and also it's shorter episodes. I quite like short episodes um, myself when I watch podcasts. So it's it's good in that way, I guess. Um, yeah. Oh, and if you're watching this on iTunes, yes, I'm going to be solely putting this on YouTube. Um, there's been a few problems uploading episodes. I have to upload to two different places. So I'm going to upload to uh, YouTube, which I find really quick and really easy, and then I have to upload to Libsyn for the iTunes and it takes forever, it fails, I just have, I spend probably an extra two to three hours trying to get the um, episode up and I really just don't have that time so I've decided that I am just going to um, keep the podcast in the one place and have it on iTunes, no, YouTube, have it on YouTube only. So if you are watching this on iTunes, please go over to YouTube and subscribe. Um, yeah, so hopefully I'll see you there. And yeah, have a lovely, lovely week. And I will talk to you all again very soon. Bye.